Hey, what's up everyone? It's Mir, and I'm back with another video as the newest character for Street Fighter 6 just dropped, which is Aki. And uh, as you may know, she has a unique mechanic, which is her poison. So I figured I'd make a short video uh, discussing what it does and how to best use it if you're playing Aki, as well as some ways to counter it and uh, the ways she might use it if you are playing against her. So let's get straight into it. So first things first, I want to give a brief explanation before I move on to the tips on how the poison actually works. So feel free to skip ahead if you already know how it behaves. But as I mentioned before, uh, Aki's main uh, mechanic is that she can poison an opponent. And this poison deals damage over time, as you can see on the top right of the screen. And this is very similar uh, to her master, Feng, from Street Fighter V. So the poison uh, lasts for a certain amount of time after it is applied, and the effect will go away if Aki gets hit. So right now you see that uh, Kami jabs me and uh, the effect is gone. However, it will persist if I'm blocking, parrying, or armoring through a move, as you can see here. Uh, even the DI, for example, the effect will stay on. In fact, it just expired there, but I will uh, show again so that you guys may see it. You see how Kami is still poisoned, the health bar is still purple and it's uh, draining. And uh, one thing that's important about this poison effect is that it doesn't actually stack. Whenever you apply it again, it just resets the duration of the timer, but it doesn't actually increase the damage it deals over time. So Aki has plenty of ways of applying this poison. All over, of course, I'll go back punch attacks do, so the fireball, the puddle, and the, the bubble burst apply the poison as well as the overdrive fireball as well. Then you have all of the whip attacks. So you have the straight whip here, then you have the diagonal whip and the uh, straight up whip. Those all apply uh, poison as well. Then you have OD Cruel Fate, which is her flip. This uh, dive of hers, if it hits, as you can see, this also applies the poison. You have the punch follow-up to the Cower Crouch, which is this dive that she does from the slither. Uh, you can do it different timings and such. And uh, this applies poison too. You have your level 1 super and your level 2 super, which also apply the poison effect, which is uh, quite convenient as you can actually tag these at the end of many combos. And the level 2 in particular has a full screen presence with the heavy version. And it leaves a puddle behind that the opponent gets poisoned by. And finally, you have your heavy punch, heavy punch target combo, which is the only normal attack or unique attack, I guess, that applies the poison effect. The poison is only applied on hit if uh, the opponent is blocking or parrying or armoring through an attack in any way. Uh, the poison won't be applied, as you see here, the cami is blocking, no poison is applied. I have her to do a drive impact. On wake up, you see that her bar never goes purple and she just armors through the attack without being poisoned. The exceptions are the Corsico Back Medium Punch uh, Puddle Attack, Orchid Spring, which is basically unblockable as long as the opponent uh, stands on the puddle, they get poisoned. And this is true for uh, her level 2 as well, as it leaves uh, a puddle behind. This is a, an attack that uh, can be used at the end of many combos, and this puddle lasts considerably longer than the other, so this is something to keep in mind. Now, being able to poison your opponent is uh, pretty useful, especially because, you know, the damage over time. But it would be fairly underwhelming if it were just like this, as it doesn't last very long and the damage is kind of low. Uh, however, in Street Fighter 6, Aki has the opportunity to burst the poison for extra effects. And uh, as you can see, for example, in the case of this attack, it now knocks down and does extra damage. Uh, only certain moves do this. And they get special properties when you burst the poison, as I've mentioned. And this is a very similar mechanic to uh, Gil's Retribution, again from uh, Street Fighter V, where um, you would get special effects by combining elements of different kind. However, it's much easier to do in Street Fighter VI, as you basically just need the opponent to be poisoned, which naturally happens with a lot of your attacks at the end of combos and stuff. And then uh, you will be able to pop it and uh, continue the combo or get extra damage different special properties that i'll not describe so as you've seen uh, our whip attacks trigger the poison the uh, light one knocks down the medium one has this uh, stagger knockdown that lets you continue the combo on the ground that one is quite valuable and i'll come back to it later then you have uh, the heavy whip which pops them up higher for a juggle so you can follow up here with another whip for example so something like this which poisons them again, very convenient. 
The follow-up to her fireball and OD fireball also pop the poison. This is more of a thing that will happen naturally as you're zoning or doing certain combos and it does extra damage and knocks down. It's more like of a canned thing. As I mentioned before, that heavy punch, heavy punch target combo uh, also pops the poison and as you see, it juggles the opponent much higher. And in this situation, uh, you're able to combo into any of our supers, which is quite convenient as, as I mentioned before, the level one and the level two both poison the opponent again. So this goes straight into their game plan of keeping the opponent poisoned and deal damage over time. And finally, you have uh, Venomous Fang, which is the Coward Crouch uh, Dive. As you see, it gives a Crumple Stun, and then you can continue the combo here for actually quite high damage. If this is done in a juggle of some kind, it will send the opponent tumbling instead. As you can see, I can follow up with a super, and in some cases, even a dry brush conversion afterwards. All right, now that we know the basics, let's discuss some strategies. So the most important tip, and it might sound a little bit obvious, but I think it's important to mention, is that you want to end all of your combos into something that keeps the opponent poisoned, as uh, this is what makes your uh, strike throw mix-up scary, as your reward is much higher if you manage to correctly pop the poison. This is a situation that happens naturally fairly often, as a lot of your enders already do poison your opponent, Although there are some situations where you might be tempted to cash out for damage as on paper that would be, uh, you know, the best option. Something like comboing into your fireball and then popping it is technically one of your best enders. However, as you can see, that doesn't poison the opponent. The follow-up automatically bursts it. So in a situation like that, it might be more beneficial to go for a uh, follow-up that does less damage, but maybe keeps the opponent closer to you and keeps them poisoned so that your strike throw mix-up afterwards will be more rewarding. Even if you uh, end up failing to open up your opponent, you will still have uh, the poison ticking, which will do a little bit of damage in the background. And one thing that happens fairly often is that people get really antsy when they're poisoned, so they might make uh, some mistakes and you can use this to your advantage. Which means that if you are on the receiving end, you do not want to be careless on defense. Sure, the poison might be annoying, and the fact that it's dealing damage over time uh, basically means that it's more effective damage for Aki for having hit you with the poison. You might be very incentivized to try and hit her back to get the poison uh, to stop ticking. But this is exactly what Aki wants, as she can uh, frame trap you or uh, do whatever to you, shimmies and stuff, and do a lot of damage. So actually, blocking it out and taking the poison damage over time might be worth it, because the damage you might end up taking for, say, falling for a shimmy would be extremely high. Of course, if you're just sitting there blocking it out, uh, this opens up the opportunity for Aki to throw you, but compared to the damage you could get from a shimmy, uh, this is a small price to pay. Another very important tip is to learn how to set up your puddle, which is quarter go back medium punch orchid spring. And the, the important part about this is that as long as the opponent is in the puddle, the poison is constantly reapplied. So if you hit someone in the puddle, you have access to unique combos that you wouldn't otherwise. So a pretty good example of something like this is, uh, for example, if I hit someone with my critical four medium punch, you see I'll get the stagger stun where they fall over. Uh, but normally the combo just ends there. I get to follow up with another attack, but that's just it. It's still pretty good damage, but if they're st sitting in the in the puddle, you'll see how the second uh, medium punch whip has a different effect where they get popped up in the air like that. And this is particularly deadly in the corner as I can follow up with extra damage. I personally don't know many setups into the puddle, but there's plenty out there and I will share a simple one that we have in our Aki combo guide that might be useful to start out with. As you saw, I had 
DJ wake up with a normal and I still could frame trap him even though I had set up the puddle. So that's a very convenient setup to learn, although it requires some precise timing. The next piece of advice is that you should use the heavy punch, heavy punch target combo to pop the poison safely, as this target combo actually is visually confirmable. You can press very, very late and still uh, get the um, cancel to come out and the target combo to work and then you get the pop and as I mentioned before uh, when you have uh, an enhanced uh, target combo here you get to combo into any of your supers including your level 3 as you can see here or you can continue with uh, for example a drive rush conversion. This makes it quite effective in neutral as standing heavy punch actually has a lot of range for the startup that it has, it's 12 frames and as you can see it goes really really far and uh, you're able to convert into any of your follow-ups from any range so uh, this is a very important thing to learn how to do. It isn't however without any weaknesses. Uh, of course, it is sort of vulnerable to the eye as it's only two hits, it has a lot of recovery, even if you do a single hit uh, you might get uh, caught. Uh, Jump-ins are also quite effective against it, but of course this is the first layer of uh, the mix-up basically. So like as you use this more often in neutral, you can wait and actually bait the DI and uh, then punish it yourself. So this is something that Aki players and your opponents will have to keep in mind at all times. My last tip is that you should learn how to use Corsica Ford Heavy Punch as an anti-air. Even though it's not invulnerable frame one, Aki crouches quite low, so you can still do it fairly late and still score uh, an anti-air, as you can see, and has a pretty decent hitbox above her head. This is especially important because it applies poison, but also because it pops the poison, and it will give you an anti-air combo if it does so. You can extend this with Drive Rush for more damage or to combo into some of your supers. If you're playing against Aki and they're very keen on anti airing you with Corsico for the Heavy Punch, what you can do is that you can try to bait it with an empty jump, as the horizontal hitbox is actually quite short, so something like this. As you can see, uh, the Corsico for the Heavy Punch completely whiffs, and if you're ready, uh, you can actually punish the whiff with a combo of your own, punish kind of combo. Her long range anti air, which is crouching heavy kick, is a fairly low reward, and uh, when it is an empty jump, it actually doesn't even knock down. As you can see right there, it just air resets. So, this is not something that uh, you should ignore as uh, the risk for this option is quite low compared to the potential reward that you might get if they whiff a Corsico for Heavy Punch right in your face. I actually have a very quick bonus tip for you guys. It's not even poison related, but if you're Aki and you're in the corner, just do this. It is very, very effective and you'd be surprised by how many people get caught off guard by it because it's completely strike invincible. You'll be able to get out of so many situations. Of course, you have to be careful as you can get thrown. And if you do get thrown, you get a punish counter throw. But uh, if people are not ready, this is basically get out of corner free. So keep that in mind. I hope you liked today's video. I think it was fairly basic, but important to go over what Aki can and cannot do especially because the poison is the core part of her game plan. So it's important to know how she can use it and how you can play against it uh, if you're playing against Aki. We already have an Aki combo guide on our channel as well as a variety of other guides both generic and character specific for Street Fighter 6. So I highly suggest you subscribe to our channel if you're interested in this sort of content as there's always more uh, coming up. And I guess I'll just see you in the next video. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye bye.